Hi, and thanks for checking out this video on Neo4j Bloom and how it's useful for data scientists and analysts. Neo4j Bloom is a powerful, domain agnostic, graph visualization solution that works out of the box with Neo4j. It helps you investigate your data and can also help you inform hypotheses. Neo4j Bloom is also a great companion to Neo4j's graph data science algorithms and can be particularly useful for visualizing and explaining, for example, centrality or community detection algorithms. It also has a number of advanced features that let you explore your graphs with low to no code, including the ability to expand nodes, reveal relationships, and find shortest paths between nodes. Bloom offers multiple ways to build queries, including via graph pattern searches, looking for property values, full text searches, or through powerful search phrases. Bloom is also a great way to communicate and explain findings to colleagues, peers, clients, managers, executives. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, and Bloom is a great way to turn the power of graph into a visual so let's have a look at some of these features using a Twitter dataset derived from Neo4j's Twitter account. I'll be using Neo4j Desktop to launch Bloom, and Neo4j Desktop and Bloom are available for free download at neo4j.com. Once we open Bloom, we can see in the Perspective Designer, which is available in the Perspective drawer on the top left-hand corner of the screen, the list of the different node categories available in this dataset. We have User, Tweet, Hashtag, and Link categories, and you can select what captions you want to see on scene based on the categories available. We also have the list of relationships available within the dataset visible in the Perspective Designer. The Near Natural Language search bar allows you to conduct searches of different types. The first type of search that we'll try to conduct is a full text search. By typing learning into the Near Natural Language search box, we'll receive nodes that contain the term learning among their properties. Note that a full text search can take quite a long time depending on the size of your database and other implementation details. Next, we'll try out a graph pattern search. In this case, we're looking for a graph pattern where we have any tweet node connected to any hashtag node connected to another tweet node. This should return hashtags that are connected to more than one tweet. Finally, you can search for indexed properties. This is another way to conduct a graph pattern search. If we start with a node category and then look for a property key, we can then enter a value and if you're graph has been indexed based on those properties, you should have fairly performant results based on your search terms. Another powerful way to use the Near Natural Language search box is by constructing search phrases or using search phrases that have been created by someone else. In the Perspective Designer, you can see a list of the search phrases associated with the perspective. In this case, we have a search phrase where we're looking for users with a particular screen name, and we have a dollar sign name parameter. We can actually use the dollar sign name parameter to offer suggestions to users when they start typing in the search phrase, and we can customize how the suggestions are presented. In this case, we're just using the label key user and showing the screen name values associated with it. So if we come back to our near natural language search box and type in user with screen name, we'll see a list of screen names that are available in the database, and we can start typing one of interest, Neo4j Stockholm, for example. Now let's talk about some of the graph exploration features that Bloom offers. First, we'll get some data on scene by searching for hashtag nodes that have the property name tweet containing the term graph and that are connected to a tweet. Now we might find a cluster of interest and want to examine it a little bit more closely. In this case, we see we have a couple of different hashtags attached to a number of different tweets. We might want to right click on one of the tweets and expand the node. There are different ways to expand a node, which is essentially finding all of the neighbors associated with it. You can find all of the neighbors at once, or you can look for particular nodes along relationship types. 
There's also an advanced expansion function which lets you have even more control over what you're looking for when you do the expand. In this case, we're simply going to expand all. Another way that Bloom allows you to explore the graph is by looking for shortest paths between two nodes. For example, we might see the cluster we're exploring and a node of interest in a different cluster that isn't connected to it and wonder what the closest relationship is between them. To do so, you simply select both of the nodes and then right click on one and choose shortest path. This will reveal the shortest path in the underlying graph between these two nodes. In this case, it happens to be via the Neo4j Twitter account. Another powerful feature is revealing relationships between nodes in a group. To reveal relationships, simply highlight a grouping of nodes, right-click on one of them, and select Reveal Relationships. Much like expansion, you can reveal all relationships, or you can select a particular relationship type and only show those. Now let's talk about styling your graph. In this example, we'll look for tweets that were mentioned by users. We might decide that the color of tweets and users are a little too similar for our liking. So what we can do is simply go over to the styling panel and click on the color next to tweet and change the default color, let's say, to blue. We can do the same thing for user, changing the color to, let's say, red. We can see that our tweets and our users are distinctly different colors on the scene. We can also close the styling panel to give ourselves more room to work and explore. And we might decide that we want to do some even more interesting things with styling on this graph. We can use rule-based styling to make changes different types. So let's look at the user category and we'll add a rule saying that we want to keep track of how many different accounts each user is following. We might select accounts having less than 10,000 different users that they're following. We can use the histogram slider to adjust what we want, or we can use the text entry to be more precise. Let's say that we want users that have less than 10,000 uh, people they're following be a gray color. Now we can move on to the tweet users, and let's say we want to do something interesting with rule-based styling related to tweets. In this case, we'll go back to the rule-based styling panel for tweet, and we'll select, in this case, the favorites property. Here, we're interested in how many different favorites a tweet has, and in this case, we'll choose to change the size so that tweets that have more favorites will be bigger, and tweets that have fewer favorites will be smaller. We can apply this styling as well, and we'll see that the size of the tweet nodes changes based on how many followers that they have. You can create many rule-based styles for each type of node, and you can turn them on and off as your analysis needs. In this case, we can see an interesting cluster up here where there are a number of liked tweets and we can see that the users that mentioned them uh, were a combination of users that had both less than and more than 10,000 accounts that they were following. Now let's talk about how we can share our results with colleagues. Let's pare down this graph to a section of interest. In the top right hand corner of Bloom, we have an export button. This enables you to export your visualization either as a high quality PNG file without any of the other artifacts you see on the screen normally, or as a CSV file. When you export as a CSV, you actually get a zip file that contains a CSV containing all of the nodes and their properties, and a second CSV containing all of the relationships and their properties. Also note that in Bloom 2.0, with the Enterprise Server plugin, users have the option of saving multiple scenes and sharing them directly with their colleagues. 
So in closing, we've demonstrated a few of the different ways that Bloom can be a very flexible and powerful tool dealing with data sets across multiple domains. We looked at a Twitter data set, but Bloom can be useful across countless domains, including research and development, fraud detection, supply chain management, and others. Bloom offers exploration and communication at varying degrees of complexity and complements Neo4j's database and graph data science algorithms perfectly. It's also very useful in conjunction with popular business intelligence platforms and other analytic tools. Why not get started today? Go to neo4j.com, click on Getting Started, and download Bloom as part of Neo4j Desktop, or start a free AuraDB trial.